What's up everybody, Tim Conley here, and I've got another audience member coaching session with Anand. Anand comes on wanting to know how to charge more. He's getting uh, some decent clients for the service he provides, but they don't value his expertise. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dive into what he does, what the clients get out of that, and how he can turn their desires for his services, his labor, into strategy to sell his thinking. If you would like to be a part of these audience coaching sessions, just send me your name, your website, your main social medias, and the specific problem that you have in your business, and you have to have a business, you have to have clients who are paying you money, send all that to tim at timconley.net and let's check it. I checked out your YouTube video, but you know, tell me who you are. Okay. Uh, first of all, Tim, thank you for having me on here. Uh, you know, it's uh, I've been following your channel for about over six months now, but I just love the content that you put out for free. You know, that's something I want to do as well. Uh, mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of people, marketers out there, who only put out content because they want to funnel you in. You know, right. that's the only purpose. But I, I I don't get that sense from you, so I definitely appreciate that you are just educating people with your knowledge. I want to get the best quality people as well into my world by showing them or giving them value upfront mm -hmm. uh, enough that they see uh, not only my expertise, but also just they want to see what they can achieve by us working together ultimately. Anand, so like what do you do and then what is that working together for a client? Sure. Uh, yeah, so just a little bit about me. My name is Anand. I, I live in San Jose, California, okay. and I'm a marketer. You know, I just love marketing. Um, I've been working in uh, different companies in the Bay Area, so pretty much Silicon Valley for the last seven years. Okay. Uh, I've worked for the biggest company in San Jose, and I also work with some medium to small companies. So, uh, okay. and I enjoyed all of it. Actually, I enjoyed the smaller companies more because you get to do a lot more things. You get to be more creative. Right. So right. I got into marketing because even when I was super young, I realized that it's a very creative thing. So that's definitely my creative outlet. Um, and also, I just enjoy uh, building businesses and just helping other businesses grow. Okay. It, my mindset has always been that that, that way. So... I recently, like less than a year ago, about about nine months ago, I started my own agency, and mm -hmm. we focus on video marketing. And within video marketing, it's the main platform of focus is YouTube. So initially, I got into this by just helping people grow on YouTube. So okay. we take care of all your content strategy. If you need video editing, we can we have video editors. We do all your optimization on the platform, like thumbnails, titles, SEO, everything. Okay. Um, and then we also do your analytics and all that and give you a report based on what's working, what's not working. But then in the process of doing that, I kind of almost lost my way because I feel like I positioned myself in a way that I wasn't using my expertise anymore and, and became more of just like a service provider where if someone was like do you need oh I, i'm looking for a video editor can you edit these videos for me um uh, then i'm like sure so i just took them on uh just charge them a little bit more than what i would pay to my editor and just okay. you know provided a service uh or they're like can you make um these these graphics for me can you make a thumbnail for me so it just became pretty much like a middleman between my creative team and and the people who needed those services, but not really using my background as a marketer, not positioning myself as an expert. And for this right. reason, I couldn't demand those uh, premium prices because then I'm not providing any much value, which I know I can provide, but that's just the situation I'm in right now. Okay. Um, so one of the things we, we should discuss is about premium pricing. There's, Premium pricing for really small companies, 
And then there's premium pricing for very large companies. And those prices vary dramatically. Like there's, they're not even remotely close to each other. So, so part of pricing really comes down to who your customer is. So if all you're doing is putting together the system, like you were saying, you know, I'm putting together these pieces and, and it makes everything easier for, for my clients. Well, there's a lot of people out there that would find that valuable enough to pay a, a decent price for it. Uh, and, and, you know, we'll get into margins and things like that in a bit, but if you go, if you target the wrong people, then they just won't pay it because those they'll start thinking, well, I'll just go find all those individual pieces myself. And, and then that's, and I'll just manage it all myself because they value their money more than their own time. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, it does. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So you're doing this. What is it that I, I can help you with? What are you actually after? Sure. So uh, my first thing is, uh, how do I position myself and actually my expertise and only take on clients that need, you know, they, they don't just need the labor as you talk about in the videos. They, they are looking for an expertise as a marketer and how can I bring them results using my expertise? And if I only focus on the organic side of YouTube, which is great for long term, right? It's great for building mm -hmm. your brand. but then. Um, if I only focus on that, it's going to be hard for them to see results right away, right? Because they might be like, I just uploaded this video where, where I'm, not, I'm not getting any views, but they don't know that it's, we aren't producing exactly viral videos for you. It's if you're making only educational videos, which some of my clients are. Uh, mm -hmm. So I was thinking, how can I package my, my services in a way that uh, I can maybe even include some paid ads in there? So to give them those results right away maybe i can generate some traffic for them maybe some leads to their landing pages so that, that they can then use those results and the money that they make from my ads to keep reinvesting back into my services and also grow their brand at the same time so some an attractive package that would be like irresistible to anyone because if i'm like if i'm bringing you more business then why why won't you pay me right if if, if i'm <laughs> making you if I'm making you 20,000, 30,000 a month, then why won't you pay me 5,000, right? But right now that's not happening. I'm right. just being a service provider, but there's no tangible result uh, unless they work with me for like six months to a year. So, Well, and that's, that's the thing is when you're selling essentially SEO, uh, you're just doing it for YouTube, you, that, is, that is the case. So people need to understand uh, before they even buy, what they're buying. And part of what they're buying is a six month or 12 month system. That makes sense. So if they, if they think, Oh, you're just going to do these things and I'll start getting instant views and those instant views will turn into instant money, then fantastic. Which if you've been selling it that way and, and you might be inadvertently selling it that way, you might not even be trying to sell it that way, but needing, but needing to make the close, you give them the impression that they'll get results sooner than they actually will. I'm not saying you're doing that. It can happen. So if you are upfront with people, then you're going to have far fewer clients because a lot of people are like, oh, there's no way I'm waiting six to 12 months to get results from this which means you need to have that little hinge of swing big doors that I always talk about, right? You, you're going to have to have a handful of clients who are going to pay you more money because YouTube is a significant part of their business. If it's just something that they're going to do, because um, you know, I've learned this. I just recently passed the 3,000 subscriber mark and I've been at it for a year and a half. Well, not, not quite a year and a half. So just under a year and a half it took uh, to get to uh, from, I think, like 12 subscribers to th uh, over 3,000. And it's been hard. Had I known how hard it would be, I wouldn't have done it because I can get 3,000 subscribers on an email list within a couple of weeks. 
maybe right. even in a week, right? And have those people uh, sending me uh, sending me checks. If I'd have known how hard it was going to be, I probably wouldn't have done it. If you're trying to convince people who are not already doing YouTube, then you're going to have a hard time really keeping them as a client. Uh, so, so you've got to determine who are your customers. There are the ones who are getting started. So then maybe you have a certain segment of your audience and market that are just getting started. Well then sell them a getting started package. No, no monthly, right? No monthly service. Just get started. We're going to set up certain parts for you, but then other parts we're going to just guide you and teach you how to do it yourself because they're just not going to stick around to pay you a significant sum over the course of time. Uh, then the other aspect of, of this is you then offer them your services. So, so these people are not going to be your money makers. They, they are probably going to you know, keep the lights on. They're probably going to keep you fed, but they're unlikely to make you wealthy. Then what's your medium package? Who's the client you've been working with the longest that you're like, oh, they could use these things. Okay. And, like, uh, and, and I don't know your price points and stuff. So we, and we don't even have to go into that right now. Determine what's your medium package uh, service. So that would be, again, a project. What kind of project can you do to kick them off? It might even be the same kickstart program for the lower uh, the the lower tier might they might just get that plus a premium kickstart that makes sense okay okay and and those people because they're probably uh, already attempting youtube they're already attempting video somewhere else or they've committed to doing a a bigger budget, like, like they're like, oh, we're going to, we're going to succeed at YouTube. Kind of how I, I got started. I was going to succeed. So then you give them that startup package, or if they already have a YouTube channel, and this is where your money's really going to lie, is people who already have a YouTube channel that believe they can get better results, they can drive business, or they can build their brand through YouTube but they just don't know what's going on. If you have clients who are driving business because of YouTube or want to, mm -hmm. then those people are going to need you to provide insights, not just labor, right? Because if you just send me a report and tell me, hey, this video did okay, that video didn't, uh, you just didn't help me. You did not help right. me at all. All you, all you gave me was, good or bad. I, I need, I need insight. How do I take a bad video, make it good? How do I not make a bad video again? Right. And how do I do more good videos? Like if you can give me that insight on a regular basis, then I'm going to value your service far more than just the labor you're providing. Does that make sense? Right. Right. Absolutely. So it's, it's not just a service, but it's, I mean, there's coaching involved and there is the labor involved. And Correct. my expertise. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's something, yes. Uh, I mean, I completely agree with you. That that's something that I'm not doing a good job of right now. I, I'm just, you know, they just send me the raw videos or maybe even edited videos sometimes. And I'm like, Fine, I'll just upload it for you. Here's a video, it's published. <laughs> right. You're training your customers for that. And you might have done so at the very beginning. Like, oh, I, I just want to get paid. I just want to start getting clients in and just start figuring this thing out. If you're not purposeful about the way you're building your service, then that becomes your service. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Like where you're just doing that thing just because, well, that's what I started doing. Hmm. Even though you know more today, you know more nine months later than you did when you started. 
So why are you still doing it the exact same way you did nine months ago? Right. Uh, we do this a lot in services. You just start a thing and then you try to get good at that thing and you don't figure out, well, is this even the right thing to be doing? I agree 100%. Uh, definitely. Uh, I, I know that even just based on how many channels I've managed, uh, fortunately, I was able to get in touch with some clients who like combined like just like four or five clients i manage over a million subscribers right now but okay. these are people i got through referrals for the most part um but just looking at their data you know i've, I've learned so much in terms of what's what's working what's not working uh but the struggle is often that not everyone is equally dedicated as a client uh you know some clients are like they, they don't want to let's say put in the work in terms of if i tell them hey can you maybe get a cameraman because you know that will really improve your videos and uh, help with your watch time keep people watching instead of you just filming the whole video in one spot right um, but then they they don't end up doing that whereas other clients are very open to our ideas and they do it right away and then because on, on youtube uh, even for seo there's only so much i can control on my end like I can, I can optimize the video the best way possible. Like have the most clickbait titles and you know thumbnails or whatever. But then if the actual video that they have is not even that good, it's not going to keep people watching. And right. I, as you know, you know, watch time is the number one metric. Yeah. Uh, so those are some things out of my control then at that point. So how do I get them results? Like. So th this comes up a lot in all services. Uh, uh, web designers complain about it. Uh, everybody complains about clients. That clients aren't getting me the things I need to be successful for my client. Well, that's a broken system. That's not a broken client necessarily, right? So, so you are taking on clients that may not be dedicated to actually being good at YouTube. Well, that's a broken system. That, that really isn't the client's fault. You just didn't figure out whether or not they were actually committed to succeeding. And part of that is because you sold them labor instead of selling them your thinking. Mm -hmm. So if you sell them your thinking, it's like, hey, here's what we're going to do. We're going to build your channel. We're going to work together. We're going to meet at least once a month, probably twice a month, every two weeks, and we're going to plan out your videos. We're going to plan out all the things that you're going to accomplish. We're going to base it on data that we're getting from previous videos, which ones are working, which ones uh, is, uh, is the YouTube audience responding well to. And, and then you're going to go shoot those videos. Maybe I'm even going to help you script them or you're going to send me the raw footage and then we're going to take a look at it and say, okay, now go shoot this again. Maybe if you have, a, if you have a client who's paying enough money, you do it live where they shoot and you or one of your team members, preferably one of your team members is reviewing the footage. So there's not that whole, upload wait for somebody to download and then right and that whole back and forth which could take forever yeah. uh, it could add a day or two and then the person's like i don't want to try to go put on the same clothes i wore two days ago and try to reshoot this thing so you might have some that will be willing to uh, have immediate uh, editorial feedback uh, I was I was having a conversation with uh, with a friend about being a uh, online coach for uh, for uh, physical fitness because I had hired an online coach for physical fitness a couple of years ago. Um, oh gosh, almost four years ago now. Like the idea at first didn't didn't make sense. Like a personal trainer at the gym. Why would I uh, pay somebody? and then go to the gym and work out, or even pay somebody online and then pay a personal trainer in person. Why would I do that? And it turns out that that personal trainer online could give me insights that my personal trainer at the gym could not. 
because that per that person is you know hustling through the workout right they're not there to coach me they're not there to make sure i'm doing a great job they're not make they're not making sure my mental state is spot on they're just they're just there to get me to do my work so what if you had this online coaching where you worked with them uh, where you uh, took a look at their uh, their environment and you said, oh, you know, hey, you got that light and you got this light over here. I don't know if it's showing up well. Uh, this light and this other light. Uh, these things, if you did it this way, then you would get this result. Oh, you have, uh, you have this issue with autofocus, which I've been having a problem with autofocus on my camera for a while now. Uh, maybe you should use this lens. Or maybe you should just go, uh, maybe go to a prime lens and then just stay on manual uh, focus as opposed, to, which I'm on manual focus right now. So I may come in and out as I move around. I might actually come in and out of focus, but you could coach your clients on that. Uh, they upload a video, even just a segment of a video, and you could coach them on presentation. If I do my videos like this anon, and and it's like, hey, you guys should really, you know, focus on building clients for your agency, and and I talk like that on my channel, like, who's gonna watch? Right. right. What if you said, okay, upload your video, and then we'll do speech coaching? That's an amazing point. No, these these are things that I've dealt with for myself just to improve. Like I I like how. You you said like the prime lens example, the autofocus, these are the exact scenarios I have dealt with for myself because I'm like, I need to buy a new lens. I bought a prime lens, I put an autofocus and then I'm like, you know, why is my video so blurry? Right. And, uh, but uh, if, if, if like the both of us have gone through that thing, then imagine how many other people have to deal with the exact same thing. And if you wanted to scale, especially on the lower end, you make it group coaching. We all get on Zoom, just like we're on right now. We do Zoom, and you got five people on there. All five bring a clip, uh, you know, maybe a five-minute clip or hopefully less than a five-minute clip, and they, they show it, you know, share their screen, play it for everyone, right? And or, or, or you get, they send them in, and then you play it for everyone, and then you critique it, and the other members get to give their feedback. Right. But what I'm getting is, so if I have like a getting started package, is that uh, only a coaching package or is that coaching plus done for you, for someone um, just starting? I had, so depends on how much knowledge you have. So a lot of people want to jump right to the coaching, jump right to the, uh, to the course, creating a course and all that stuff, and then don't have enough knowledge about their customers to be able to solve their customers' problems. You sound like you've already gone through all that and know what their problems are. Mm -hmm. So what I would build is a online course and I wouldn't just sell it as a single online course. I would package this together with the online coaching. Okay. And I would put them together as a group. So maybe that's all they want. Maybe they're like, no, I'll do everything else myself. I'll follow your course. I'll make my own cover art. I'll do all that stuff. You just, you know, give me the shortcut. And I'll come on to the coaching and that's all I need. And your coaching might last for three months or six months, right? Doing longer term coaching is good for you, but not necessarily them. Uh, but you could test that out, see how long you can get people to stay because you can always provide greater and greater value over time. As their channels get bigger, uh, there's other insights you can give them that, that don't make any sense when they don't even have enough subscribers to get their own custom URL. Right. Right? Right. Yeah, that makes sense. And I actually took recently, like within the last, uh, about within the last six months or so, I took like three channels from like zero to 1000 subscribers. 
Okay. Uh, because that's that's what they came to me for. They were like, you know, I, I'm just starting out. I just want to get thousand subscribers. So we did like a basic content strategy. Um, I did some initial keyword research for them that these are things people are searching for and like Google Trends kind of topics uh-huh. and see and you know that really helped them out. Um, just get to one thousand subscribers. And then on there, the other side, that I, is a product. You just have the name of a product right there. Hmm. Your first, okay. your your first one k. Okay. You're saying this program will get you your first thousand clients, your your first thousand subscribers, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's that's something you can sell, and you could deliver that uh, as as a group program. You know, here's the content. You got to study the content because you're going to have to do a bunch of leg work yourself. Uh, you know, including how to shoot your own video and all the stuff like it, treat it, treat whoever buys that as somebody who has no idea what they're doing mm-hmm. because they probably don't know what they're doing. Right. right. I would have bought that like a year and a half ago. I would have bought that program from you okay. because I needed it because I did. I didn't even know how to turn my camera on. Right. I had to read the instructions just to figure this thing out that becomes a good filtering process that that product can be the thing that lets you know well that person over here is fit to be a client that per that because that person actually runs a company that's doing say a million dollars a year well then they would be a great one for my my service or that's a corporation that needs to build their brand say because you're in uh, san jose it's like Tap into SaaS, right? They, they don't care about signups. They care about people seeing their video on how to actually use, uh, use their app. They care about their brand. They care about this other thing. So helping them get uh, subscribers uh, is great for them, and they're not needing it to generate revenue. Okay. Right? But then... Then when they're after they've gotten settled in and they're like, yep, we're getting subscribers and all that stuff. Then you're like, okay, hey guys, you want to take it to the next level? Let's kick it up a notch. Let's start doing face uh, YouTube advertising. Mm-hmm. You're you're you've gotten good at making your videos. What if we start now driving revenue with this? What if we start uh, driving users? and not just YouTube subscribers. Does mm. that sound good? Right? And then they're like, yeah. Right? Okay. So it doesn't really matter what, what market you go into. Like, you know the pieces that could get them what they need. Mm-hmm. Right. And right. You notice, I haven't talked about labor yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. But what do you think about the other way around where as I mentioned earlier, like instead of focusing on the the brand and subscribers first, and then going to the ads, if once they start seeing the results, what if we go the other way, where they're just starting out? But let what if you give them some wins in terms of uh, we make an ad for you that goes to your landing pages, your products, and you start seeing leads coming in, you start seeing the revenue coming in. And are then, you, then you are them. you running ads for people right now? Not right now, but I have. Well, Okay, so what you need to do is get some case studies on running some ads. Okay. That's it. Like, I, I, that answers your question. As soon as you do that, now you just turn it into a product. Hey, we have this product, and then I'm going to run through the exact same advice that I just gave you. Okay. Here's the program for, for being able to uh, create your first YouTube ad so that we can help you run it. It's a done with you program. These are really packageable services, unlike uh, digital marketing. So I get a lot of guys who come to me and they're like, oh, I do digital marketing. Wow, that's really tough. Like, okay, now we have to differentiate you. Uh, We got to even make a product that is identifiable because you're only doing YouTube. You can make identifiable products quite easily mm-hmm. what what other what other product do you think you could come up with off the top of your head right now i got like four like a whole uh, repurposing package so we take your youtube videos we publish it across 
I don't know, Instagram, TikTok, uh, all these platforms, we just repurpose and resize your content to get even 10 times more reach than just YouTube. Or maybe even like we build out your whole funnel because I, I have uh, I have another, uh, he's like my partner because he, he's an expert at funnels and I'm a, I'm more of an expert as a, like a top of funnel guy, you know, uh-huh. like uh, content and ads and all that. But he's an expert at like building out web pages okay. and- I'm, go- I'm going gonna, gonna to stop you though. You okay. just complicated the hell out of this, <laughs> right? I said something that's identifiable to YouTube, okay. right? That's what we were talking about. And okay. you're like, oh, we could go into funnels. Oh, that now, now you just opened me up to, hey, I, I want to have a digital marketing agency. Right. Right. It, like it, you started going like this and I'm saying, stay like right here. What's my next uh, top, top, right off the top of my head, uh, a, YouTube, uh, a YouTube SEO program, right? Going back to exactly how I said, we're going to have this, uh, it's going to have a course element to it. So you, this, you have to study this or you will not know what in the hell I'm talking about on our coaching calls. And when I'm giving you insights about your business, you won't know. Okay, so you have to study the course. Then we're going to get on these calls and we're going to get on these calls in a small group. So everybody gets personalized attention. And then out of those, you will select the ones and they may self-select by opting to pay you for the labor of SEO on YouTube, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, most likely it becomes a product all on, all on its own and then you have this SEO, YouTube SEO program, which provides services and all that. Well, that's only going to be good for people who are willing to pay for SEO services. So they have to have an established uh, YouTube channel that drives revenue or they're not going to really stick around. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Now, right. what else? Like, what else can we do inside of just YouTube? Or product launch, maybe. Like how to, uh, we, we create a whole video series that leads to a product launch. So we, we give you like, you know, make these 10 videos that's maybe giving a lot of value up front, And then towards the end, you can start promoting your, your upcoming product or service. So it's like an organic, uh, organic funnel. If you want to call that organic content, uh, lead generation. Okay. Or uh, reach your dream customers. Right. I, and, and so you would then test out the idea, like how, how do we make that happen? Like uh, if we have these 10 videos, where do they go? How do, how do we make sure people go through the 10? Uh, do they need to go through all 10 to be able to buy? Or, if it, or is it just four or three? So you don't have to make a funnel. You don't have to go into any of that. You can just help them get the, uh, the bones of it established. Okay. So right. how about something like um, uh, like a program on develop your confidence in front of the camera in four weeks? I coach okay. you through how to speak, how to present, body language, vocal tonality, all that stuff. Yeah. And if, uh, for people who want to uh, be that presenter and be, uh, be that, like it, they're going to resonate with it. Because of my proximity, right? Because I live in such a such an area. I mean, right now things are shut down anyway. But when things open up, um, would you think it's a good strategy to just start reaching out to a lot of these companies and see if they need help with YouTube specifically? Because I'm afraid that they might not even know that they need to do YouTube. So I'm going to a completely cold audience at that point. That becomes harder. Uh, going after people who are unaware that they actually need something. Mm-hmm. That's, that's pretty tricky. Uh, for people who are watching this, if you happen to live in a place that is highly dense with a market, there's absolutely, absolutely no reason to go anywhere else until you've tapped out that market. So, so if you were focused on SaaS, then just stay right where you are. And it makes networking easier. Even when you're networking on Zoom, it's still easier mentally as humans to connect with people that we know are just down the street. Right, right. 
that that has been my experience i just went to like a couple of uh, networking events before everything shut down and mm-hmm. uh, i didn't even have to sell anything i was just talking to them you know they asked you know what do you do and i'm like I'm, i have a video marketing agency and then a lot of them were interested and that's they just followed up from there like they reached out to me that hey it was nice meeting you i have this startup can you help with this and it, right. i didn't have to sell them anything like it wasn't like a hard sell it was just a conversation um, right so uh but then if that's the case uh, what would you recommend as let's say i do decide to focus on local companies uh, saas mm-hmm. companies because there's so many what what's a good lead generation strategy for that um uh, okay so there's two there's two that we would go after uh, do you know who dan martel is no okay look him up Because okay. he's in he's in the SaaS space and he has a YouTube channel. So one, educate. Just because people around the world will see your YouTube channel doesn't mean you have to worry about getting clients from around the world. You would be making the videos for the people locally. Because uh, I don't know about you, I don't trust a video guy. A, a YouTube video guy who doesn't have a YouTube channel, right? right? I, I just wouldn't. I just wouldn't trust that guy, uh, yeah. even if you, he's an amazing expert at the thing. Mm. Wouldn't matter. It's like because, and, and it wouldn't have to be your face. It just ha- your your company would need to have a YouTube channel to prove right. that you had the skill set necessary to achieve what I need achieved. Right. Right. yeah that i mean that makes perfect sense right uh, it's uh, it's and also you educating people it's not it's not just that you're trying to show that you're credible but it's also branding and long term education and all that so right. i mean uh, yeah okay Okay. That, that makes sense. So, I mean, I have a very small channel right now uh, uh-huh. because I don't post content for myself anymore. Kind of, it's you know, just because I'm so focused on the clients. Mm-hmm. But if if I so I have like twelve hundred subscribers, but if I bump that up to like ten thousand, twenty thousand, or no, whatever, don't worry, don't worry about that. Okay, worry about putting content that you, that your target audience will care about. Gotcha. Okay. okay? You, uh, and then if anyone, a, a prospect reaches out and says, hey, why do you only have 1,500 subscribers? It's like, but these are 1,500 of people just like you. Mm. Like, I don't need a million subscribers. I need you to subscribe. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, oh yeah, that makes sense, right? Like that resonates with people like, oh, you're targeting people with this. You're not just going and getting 10,000 subscribers who could be interested in all kinds of things. You are only after this segment of people. Mm-hmm. And, and the thing is, the credibility, it's like they look at the numbers and they might go, oh, he probably doesn't know what he's doing. Maybe you'll get a few of those. You'll get a few haters. Anon, you don't know what you're doing. You only have 1,300 subscribers. You don't know, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you do is you have videos that are testimonials. Man, my channel, I got got 1,000 subscribers in in less than a a month or whatever uh, whatever your testimonials are. And my clients are the ones who are proof that I know what I'm talking about. So it's it's not so important to like have them see so see the money coming in to, in order to for them to be a good client and because Correct. there's other things that, that they, they care about. For. Yes. Right. So so if you're focused on uh, I do YouTube that generates leads or I do YouTube that makes revenue, well then the only prospects you'll ever get are people who expect YouTube to generate them leads or revenue quickly. That's all you'll get. But if you focus on brand building and you focus on these other elements, uh, you may still talk about leads, you may still talk about revenue, but if you focus on all the other things that it can do. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that SaaS cares about is a customer support. Well, what if we had people pre-watch your videos 
on how to solve certain things, how to use particular features on your, uh, on your app so they don't call customer support or they don't right. initiate a ticket. Because initiating a ticket, yeah. especially if it's like a thousand tickets, costs a lot of money. Right. Right. But what yeah. if we what if we could have this amazing video that that can and then that video is proof that your app will solve a particular problem. Right. Right. That's actually exactly what I'm doing right now for the client I'm working with locally because uh, they they're building a team right now and I'm I'm building all these like training videos. A lot of the, a lot of them are like just screen captures of how to use the platform uh -huh. and all that. So I'm doing that already for. For my client so there you go uh, and then if yeah. you can make those interesting and compelling then they make great youtube content mm -hmm. right not just training videos but actual you know interesting content right right the second one is well linkedin uh, while while you're stuck while you're stuck in your uh, home linkedin's your best friend it's a great place for you to even start putting some of your video content uh, and do some outreach, start connecting with people. Uh, angel list. I, I'd be trying to dominate on angel list, right? Right. Right. Then, then I would look into uh, potentially um, launch university. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it's launch university from Jason Calacanis. Like I'd be looking at that. Like if I'm focused on the tech space in your area, that I'm I'm gonna pound yeah. those platforms. I'm gonna try to be involved in that as much as I possibly can and become known as the video guy. Right. That's it. Uh, then when everything opens back up, one of the beauties of the place that you're at is how many events people go to. And and the thing about Silicon Valley is like that bit by itself is a brand. Like for the whole world knows Silicon Valley. So yes. if even if I get known in this one small area, it's like everyone yes, knows sir. Silicon Valley. Right? I mean, even YouTube is from Silicon Valley. So. Exactly. A, right. So know? the uh, that then you become the Silicon Valley uh, brand, uh, video guy. I'm the Silicon Valley YouTube guy. Actually, before everything shut down, I even started a meetup group where I was just going to invite entrepreneurs to come and learn from me uh, okay. just in person. And of course, record those things so I can also post on YouTube. Well, uh, then have your meetups on Zoom. Tommy Griffith of, uh, of ClickMinded, he started in Silicon Valley mm -hmm. and uh, created ClickMinded, which started as a meetup where he taught SEO. Right. right. I've taken his course. Yeah. Okay. There you go. You can follow Tommy's model. I'm going okay. to do a course on, uh, on YouTube, uh, but we're going to have to teach it to you online because we can't meet yet. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and you build your brand and, and make a little bit of cash. And then, then you get to filter through all those people as to which ones are actually going to become clients. Yeah, that, no, that's a that's brilliant, and I feel like this is scalable too. Because what I'm doing right, right now is not really scalable, uh, unless I keep hiring more and more creative people just to keep supplying the services. Well, but then, and you might, and you you might because well, there are large ad agencies, and and they make videos. They're called commercials. Yeah. Right. right. It is scalable. It is doable. You may not want that business. That's a different story. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, anything else? Because I dropped, I dropped some bombs on this one. You I, did. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, look at that, I'm gonna pat, pat myself on the back. Like, oh, come on, son. You know no, what I'm you're just, talking about. I'm just taking some notes right here, but I filled out like at least two pages. Um, oh, nice, nice. So, uh, no, that, that was like I, I need to look back at the notes just to kind of recap everything because this. Like you said, there's a lot of stuff there, but I feel like I have clarity in terms of what I need to focus on, uh, okay. at least a little bit. Um, and I feel like I can really become well known in this even one area. Uh, just might as well take advantage of being in proximity with like there's so much money here, so many businesses here, so much yes. funding here. Yeah. Uh, 
rather than even trying to reach out to people online and try to find them that way. Um, and then I'm going to work on those packages, the getting started package, the medium package, and then the the large package. And then potentially for those people, also some uh, ads, running some ads for them so they can start generating some more revenue. So I hope you got a ton of value out of this session with Anand. I, I think packaging up your services in a way that it makes sense for them to buy what you know, your intellectual property. You don't have to sell your thinking just in like a coaching session. You can sell your thinking as in training. You can package it up into courses. You can package it up into manuals and reports. Uh, you can even create a subscription base for your clients to buy your market research if that's something you do. So in the case of Anand, he has a lot of technical things that he could package up into how-tos for his clients. That leads Anand right into all the coaching that he can show them how to improve their videos. And still, we're still in the how-to section. We haven't even gotten into the thinking. The thinking is where he's going to help them strategize the type of content they produce, the uh, amount of content they produce, and who their market is and be able to target that market with those videos. If you got a ton of value from this coaching session and you would like to be on an episode of the Tim Conley coaching session, I gotta come up with a name for that. Come on, son. I gotta come up with a name for that. But if you would like to be on and go through a coaching session like this, here's the ground rules. One, you have to be in business. You already have to have clients for whatever service that you sell. That's number one. Number two, you have to have a specific problem that you want to solve. And three, you gotta email me, tim at timconley.net and tell me all those things. Who you are, what your business is, your website and social medias, and also what you want to solve. And we will get a time scheduled to come on and do this. All right, if that's cool, then also be cool with that like button. Subscribe, share, and definitely do all the socials, and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, you know what to do. Check out this video right here. This one is perfect for anyone trying to sell their thinking. How do you go about selling strategy? How do you sell the thoughts that are in your head? How do you sell intellectual property? So go, you know, we're done.